Hello, welcome to the last, that is to say the sixth of these Ask Mark sessions. We're approaching the absolute uh, finishing line. As usual, I have four questions uh, selected by the mentors, and this is the first question. I would like to know what Dr. Solms would say about resilience. I worked with families for many years, and often one or two family members would be resilient to mental instability in highly dysfunctional households, whilst most other family members would not. Position in the family or having power did not seem to be a factor. So what does he think the resilience stems from? Um, the answer to this question is, I'm afraid, what you expect it would be, which is that uh, in the mind, as in everything else, there are genetic differences. Um, the uh, major explanation in a situation uh, such as is being asked about here uh, must be constitutional genetic differences. So that's a very simple answer uh, to what nevertheless is actually a quite complicated um, question. Because there isn't one factor, genetic factor, called resilience. Um, you can have resilience in a variety of different ways, in a great variety of different ways. Um, to mention the obvious, there are multiple innate emotion systems, uh, affective systems. Uh, we focused in this course, to the extent that we focused on them at all, uh, on the six basic emotions. But there are many other um, inbuilt affects, which are called sensory affects or homeostatic affects, if you add them all together, there really are many, many, many uh, hardwired uh, affective systems in the human brain. Any one of those uh, can vary genetically, um, uh, or any permutation uh, can um, vary on a genetic basis. So, whereas one person might be resilient in regard to fear anxiety, um, another might be resilient in regard to, um, say, rage. Um, and a very different pattern then would come in the sense that uh, somebody who's resilient to fear anxiety, who's confronted by the sort of frustrations which bring forth rage, will suffer normal rage uh, because that's not where their resilience lies. And you can extrapolate from there, you get the point. Um, it's not the only uh, reason why it's more complex than it seems. But the other main reason is that those genetic factors interact with environmental factors. Um, in complex ways. Um, and the environment doesn't begin at birth. There is an intrauterine environment and there's lots of good evidence. For example, uh, maternal stress we know affects uh, certain affective systems in the brain. So a child may be born um, apparently um, sensitized to, for example, fear anxiety on a, on a, on a um, constitutional basis. But in fact, uh, they're sensitized because of something that happened um, to the mum during, for example, the second trimester of pregnancy, which is a period that we know um, uh, affects those systems. So what looks, what looks genetic might in fact be a combination of genetic and environmental factors that precede birth. Um, then we also have to take account of um, of, of um, uh, critical periods and, and maturational um, uh, uh, milestones, um, by which I'm referring most specifically to the fact that early environmental uh, influences have a far greater effect than later environmental influences. That's not to say that later things don't have any effect, but you have to have much bigger environmental uh, uh, influences later um, for them to um, override um, constitutional differences. Um, small environmental variation in the early uh, maturational environment can have quite a big effect. So things that happen very early, um, which are not remembered, which are not noticed, might uh, then be considered to be constitutional variability, whereas in fact it's not, it just looks like it later on. So uh, it's a bit of a messy question to a simple, uh, I mean a bit of a messy answer to a simple question. But those are covering the, um, the main and, and, and I think the obvious bases.